Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video in our series on cell membrane transport. In the last video we have discussed exocytosis, and in today's video, we're diving into another important concept, facilitated diffusion. It is a type of passive transport, which means, it does not require any cellular energy or ATP. Let's first discuss why cells need this special mode of transportation. In simple diffusion, small molecules like water can easily pass through the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane. But sometimes, the molecules the cell needs are either too large or charged, and they can't pass through on their own. In such cases, the cell uses this special transport mechanism called facilitated diffusion. It's a special type of diffusion, the basic principle stays the same, molecules move from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. But the key difference is that the movement is facilitated, or helped, by membrane proteins. These proteins act like gateways, allowing only specific large or charged molecules to pass through, safely and efficiently. Here is the proper definition of facilitated diffusion. So far, we've understood what facilitated diffusion is and why cells need it. Now let's explore where this process actually happens inside our body. In other words, the applications of facilitated diffusion in real biological systems. First application is simple. Glucose transport in cells. After you eat, glucose levels rise in your blood. But glucose is too large and polar to pass through the lipid bilayer. So, cells use a glucose transporter protein to bring glucose inside, using facilitated diffusion. This is especially important in muscle and fat cells. Next example is ion transport in nerve and muscle cells. Ions like sodium, potassium, and calcium can't pass through the membrane freely because they're charged. Facilitated diffusion helps move these ions through channel proteins, allowing nerve signals and muscle contractions to occur. Third example is gas exchange in red blood cells. Though gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide mostly move by simple diffusion, certain gases or larger molecules that attach to carrier proteins, such as urea or some waste products, may also rely on facilitated diffusion for efficient transport. Facilitated diffusion is not just a textbook term. It's a lifeline for many essential cellular functions. It allows cells to maintain homeostasis and function properly, without spending energy. And if you're curious to know what other components of the cell membrane make this possible, make sure to check out this video, where we'll explore the full structure of the plasma membrane. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.